Welcome to our next video of our ECU tuning guide and today we are going to be looking at TPS tuning or rather alpha N tuning because if you for example run a ITB car or a car that is generally NA and maybe running a lot of mods this can be a huge help in getting the car to run right because this goes off of the TPS so your throttle or gas pedal percentage how much it is depressed and just the rpm to know how much fuel has to be injected and uh, therefore you are not relying on the manifold absolute pressure which can be very kind of hit or miss on itb setups and also on very high horsepower or very high very high strung na builds in general so that may be a big improvement for drivability sake if you for example run one of those two setups how to do that or rather how we are going to do that i'm going to show on my 4 age itb car this is a toyota carina which uh, has a 20 valve uh, silver top engine so with itb stock and um, i'm going to show you how that is set up right now Okay, so let's say we want to tune a car with TPS. There are a few things we have to consider or we have to do in Tuner Studio to do that. First thing is going into the settings and the engine constants. We have to change the control algorithm from map to TPS so that we are using TPS. Then we have to look at spark settings because the ignition load source or how the ignition values are calculated uh, is also something that can be changed but is not necessary to uh, be changed because I think using map for the ignition source if you have uh, the map sensor still connected makes sense at least if your map value under load is kind of consistent if it's very flaky or very or is fluctuating a lot then maybe switch to tps but i consider map to be good option as well even on an itb car you have to consider though that the spark table is also going to have to look different than the map spark table because on a <clears throat> tps based system you are going to have uh, the as I said, the maximum filling of the cylinders are much earlier in the TPS range than with MAP, for example. So when you are looking at the lower RPM cells, you are probably already going to have the maximum cylinder or the maximum uh, KPA or maximum pressure reached in the within the manifold at maybe even 20% throttle position. So you might be able to take uh, that ignition value so these ignition values a lot higher a lot sooner than in the map based system for example the other way around goes for the part throttle on the higher rpms because the lower the map value was when tuning for map the in the part throttle area the ignition actually does go more advanced and since the map value is already probably at atmospheric when you are reaching 50 to 60 percent throttle you will have to reduce that value already here probably you will have to test that obviously with some dead cans but usually that is going to be the case and is going to require a different outlook or a different way of tuning and you will have to look at the tables in a different way uh, as if you would with, for example, a map tuning setup. Next thing we have to adjust is on the fuel and spark tables. In my case, it is already adjusted, but in your case, there will be a 25 here and a zero but you need obviously the whole uh, slew of percentages here. So you need the percentage from 100, so full throttle, to down to zero. It makes a lot of sense to be a bit more granular down there and up here, but in general you can do it like I did. And then you can look at my part one or two uh, to create uh, new base maps for 
fuel and spark. So basically that looks like this. The only thing that is kind of different with TPS is that from zero to 5% TPS, it's going to be a bit more of a jump than for example, from idle KPA to path throttle. So you have to consider this and uh, then adjust accordingly, but you will notice that when you start the car, <clears throat> that will make sense then. Looking at the AFR table, you will have to adjust the same TPS settings here. It's important to notice that at the AFR table, of course, there is some differences in how to adjust them as well. While you want 14.7 obviously while driving or in lower load scenarios or in part throttle, the, KPL, the KPA value, for example, on an ITB setup in your intake manifold is going to be close to atmospheric much earlier than on, for example, a single throttle body. And this is why you need to richen up the mixture much earlier in the lower RPMs than with, for example, the KPL lo KPA load axis. Because even if you press the, uh, depress the gas pedal, pedal only 10 to 15% maybe, you're probably already going to be at like 98 to 100 kpa of pressure if you are at sea level and therefore you are already under the engine's full load you can say so you are basically loading the engine up fully although you are not giving it full throttle and this is why i have kind of scaled this in a way so that on low rpms the engine is going to get richer or has a lower target AFR or richer target AFR earlier. Going to the spark table, as I said, I have used ignition load as KPA. Uh, I have still some values for turbo here, but that doesn't make much difference. We are going to look at this basically because this is going to be an NA application. So this does not make much difference to what you are seeing when you are using the normal values, but in general, these tables can be kept very similar. And that's basically it. Then you have to do some tuning. Obviously, as I said, you have to create a base fuel table, <clears throat> which I have shown in a video before. It's not that complicated. You can pretty much just copy that. But uh, yeah, and when you start the engine, just make sure to adjust the idle fueling so that the air car is running at about lambda 1 or AFR 14.3 to 15 or something like that. I tend to run it a bit richer so in the realm of like 14.0 to 14.3 because that makes the idle a bit more stable. And then I would suggest you just use autotune to get the fuel dialed in because this is going to work in a similar way. Uh, in the background, I'm going to show you the process that Autotune is using while the car is running or while I am driving. Unfortunately, I have forgotten to <laughs> capture some driving footage, so you will only see my Tuner Studio view, but still you can see what is happening. In advanced systems though, I would also set some minimum parameters such as the minimum RPM to like 1500 or so and the minimum fuel load to about 5 or 6% TPS because letting autotune correct the first row or first column is kind of it doesn't really work that well and as you can see in the autotune driving that i show in the background it is working pretty well it is working very similar to the other autotune video or in the autotune video that i showed so you can pretty much take a drive and leave that running although I would suggest using the cell change resistance too hard as it is more precise than to get it in a ballpark even. Because leaving it on normal, it sometimes happens that the ECU changes some cells to extremely rich or extremely lean sometimes and that doesn't really make much sense um, because it should always be a smooth transition between all the cells and it should look kind of like a uh, slow climbing mountain and not like a cliff somewhere or a hole in whatever fuel table. It's your fuel map. It's got a nasty hole. That's why you're unloading in third. I told you we're third. I lengthen the injector pulse. Another millisecond, just tune the NOS timer, you'll run nice. This is very important for drivability. 
the smoother your table is, the better it's the car is going to drive usually. If you have found kind of the ballpark or if you have driven a few kilometers, even on wide, wide open throttle, you can take the table and smooth it out manually a bit, a bit of course, because as I said in my previous videos about autotune, autotune is the be all and end all and there's always need to touch up the tables and I would always suggest that you look at my autotune video because I explain everything in a bit more depth in there and it kind of works the same uh, in TPS as well as it does in map. So you can apply these rules that I tell you in this video, uh, in that video, also in this video or in the tuning process of your TPS based tables. If you have changed it manually and you are in the ballpark, you can change your cell resistance also to very hard and then take a longer drive and then it will change it even more or get even more precise and do only minor changes so that it gets closer to your target AFR. You can also leave EGO correction on because the ECU will take that into account while using autotune and you can still use autotune together with that, which makes it quite a bit easier to use because for example, on cells where the car appears to be very lean or very rich, it will work with the EGO control or the EGO control will make the car run at least in those cells and the autotune will be able to fix that within that time frame, basically when it is adjusting. If you have the free version of Tuner Studio, obviously you could also use VE Analyze together with logs, but the full version makes it a lot easier. As for Spark, again, I would suggest you look at my earlier video with the dead cans on how to how, how I am showing you how to tune your Spark table. This is very important to get right because too much knock or too much uh, de detonation can cause a lot of damage in your engine and tuning that with dead cans can be or is probably the most precise thing you can do um, because you are sure that no detonation or at least only a limited amount of detonation or noise is happening in your engine. That's basically it for this video on how to do TPS tuning. It's basically not that much different from map. You just have to consider a few things and use a few settings. As I said, it's only usable for at uh, ITB setups or very high strung NA builds such as with very high lift or very high duration cams because in those cases the map value can be either very flaky or fluctuating a lot or it just has a really narrow window so it will only go down to like 70 kPa of vacuum at most and uh, so between you only have a window of between 70 and 100 kPa to work with which is pretty inconsistent and makes it pretty hard to tune. So I always suggest using this method. <clears throat> For an ITB turbo setup, of course, that's going to be a different story. Um, uh, some ECUs have a method to use TPS in combination with MAP, but uh, usually you're going to have to use MAP uh, tuning to get that sorted out. As always, that's it for me. If you need any help or if you have problems with your car, let me know either in comments below or send me a message on Instagram. Also, if you need any tuning services done, you can do that too. And otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.